Hello, welcome back. Another video. In this video I'd like to give you a quick update on the Leica MD and my selection of lenses what I've recently purchased. I've covered these in a previous video so if you haven't seen that feel free to have a look at those uh, those videos with further details in. So I've just returned from the Isle of Skye in Scotland uh, which is the mecca for landscape photography in my opinion. Uh, I'm very familiar with the Lake District here in England but the the Isle of Skye and the west coast of Scotland is just another world really, it's a fantastic location. So I've, I've really given the Leica MD a, a good run through its uh, abilities up in the Isle of Skye and on each of the seven days I was there I used the camera quite extensively and what I'll do following this video is I'll, I'll produce a, a separate video on each day on the various locations I visited and things I, uh, I came away with if you will. So this is a quick update video just to give you an idea on uh, the Leica MD and how I'm getting on with it. Uh, for, before I get into any details what I would like to do is say thank you very much for everyone who's positively contributed to the channel so far. I'm overwhelmed really with the the kind words of support and also the intelligent comments what people are giving me and, and inputs. It's very helpful for me and uh, it it's very interesting as well. You know I do use social media on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter rarely and I don't tend to get as much input as what you guys are giving me, so thank you very much for that. I'm much appreciated, and uh, t you know, together we can all uh, we can all learn something, hopefully. So in my last video, I talked about the Leica MD and how I was getting on with it after a couple of days of ownership, if you will. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I'd like to do in this video is just, like I say, give you a quick update. I think in the last video, I made a comment about the camera going to sleep quite a lot and there was um, or not going to sleep and then the battery being flat and one of I forget the guy's name now but um, a street photographer from New York I believe he was so thanks very much for your input there he, he was quite kind in saying you know try your firmware update now I did try the firmware update prior to that but it didn't work it just said error in the in the optical viewfinder which uh, so I assumed it was okay what I did is I tried it again but I formatted the the SD card first and it worked which is great so now the camera I just leave it on um, turned on all the time on single shot mode and after a few moments it goes to sleep um, and you can leave it for a day or two to press the shutter button and it's back on the same level of battery charge it was before so in effect it's like a film camera and um, I love that and I, and I want to be able to and I do use it like that as well, I just don't turn it off, just leave, just leave it on. Um, so that's great. Um, I've had a few comments about the, um, I made a point about the EXIF data on the Summeron lens and the Sum Summerit lenses. And again, another viewer kindly commented and said, there's no electrical connection between the lenses and the body, which I wasn't aware of that. I just assumed because there's a they're all six bit apparently, and there's a there is some kind of electrical connection there. Then it was it, there was some talking between, if you will, the camera and the the lens. But that's not the case apparently, and it's just a, it's just to set the frame line so it knows. Um, that's my understanding. I might be wrong, but um, so the camera effectively estimates the aperture based on the exposure and the shutter and speed, I believe. Um, it's not a big problem but it's you know coming from DSLRs if you will um, where everything's electronic talks to each other focusing and all the rest of it it's just a, a quirk of a manual lens I suppose but it, it's not a problem so long as the lenses work as planned um, so what else I've got some notes down here um, I've had a question about how does the Leica MD handle highlights in the shots I've been taking and I've I've taken a lot of pictures over the last week to 10 days and it's very rare the highlights are clipped and I'm putting uh, I think what's happening is when you when you use the camera it's underexposing by about a st by about one stop I would say which isn't a problem because you can obviously fix that and I've set myself up a preset now um, what grades it with a little bit of colour what I like and it also adds a bit more exposure in so shots uh, and I apply that in that uh, preset during the import process 
and I apply it to the whole batch of pictures I'm importing. And in a way, that's like when you get a film developed, you you can then see all the images are the same in terms of colour rendition, if you will. So so that's been working really well, and it's still got a lot of intrigue as to you know I'm taking these shots and then. I'm looking forward to getting back and seeing them in Lightroom. Um, whereas obviously on the traditional digital cameras you can you can see the image as soon as you've taken it. I think as time has gone on using the camera over, over the last 10 days or so, my confidence is growing with it and I'm starting to understand a bit more about how it handles, um, how it captures images. And what I will say is it's fantastic. It really is a fantastic camera. I've not used another M body, so I'm not sure if it's the same as an M240 or an M262 or the M10 or whatever. All I know is the images I'm seeing what come out of the camera are really pleasing to me and the process of using the camera is equally as pleasing. So it's an absolute win-win for me. Um, on the Sky Trip, I took the, the Leica MD, um, the Summerit, 35, 50 and 90 millimeter. I took the new Summeron lens, which I did a previous video on, and that's the, the new Summeron M 28 millimeter f5.6. And I also took the Super Elmar 21. And I can tell you now, 90, 95% of shots I took were on the Summeron M. What a fantastic lens that is. It's absolutely amazing. I just kept it on the camera all the time really small light convenient and if anyone you know i'm sure i read somewhere that it's not as sharp as other light lenses it's fantastically sharp and in the coming videos i'll run through some examples of images i've taken on each of the seven days and i'll give you some really detailed views they're they're absolutely fantastic i actually i'm of the opinion now you can't buy a bad Leica lens maybe i'm wrong but in my i mean i bought the summer lines of lens uh, line of lenses the cheapest lens is what they do, I think, currently. And they're all brilliant. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, I had a really interesting day down on the beach, at Brothers Point on Sky, and I used the 90mm. That was the only time I've used it, I think, on Sky. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Why I would need to spend another £1,000 on, on the summer on is beyond me. I think it's, it's blisteringly sharp. It's absolutely brilliant. So more details to follow on that. Um, so in a nutshell, the sky trip was um, was excellent. It was great to get away. It was great to see sky again. I, I love the place. So I think it's the seventh or eighth time I've been there now. Um, the summer on lens, like I say, ninety five percent of all the images I took were with the summer on. Absolutely fantastic. The Sony A seven R two. What I'm filming this on, I've got the Batis lenses for that. Um, the eighteen twenty five. Uh, the 85, I've just ordered the 135 as well, which has just been announced. I've been waiting for that lens for a long time. And I've got the 35 and the 55 as well. Took all them, hardly ever used them. I took the 7200 as well. I mean, this is a fantastic camera. It's a fantastic landscape camera, but as I mentioned in a previous um, video, there's just something about the Leica was. <laughs> I'm a total convert. It's absolutely amazing. Um, the sound of the shutter, fantastic. It, it's it's just really a nice thing to have, and I'm really pleased about that. So the Sony very rarely got used, which was um, a surprise to me because it's a fantastic camera and it's great sensor, great resolving detail. What I have noticed is on the shoots I went on, um, where I took a, a Leica image and a Sony image. The Leica image is obviously a lot smaller than the Sony image, but the colours and the micro level of contrast, the detail, it's fantastic. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll show you in future videos that what I'm talking about here, but when you look at the images side by side, the, to me, the Leica images are a lot more pleasing, and that's a brilliant result for me. It's, um, I think when I bought the Leica MD, I might have said in a previous video, it was gonna be more as a lifestyle shoot, you know, the kids around the house and family things you know it wasn't meant to be a dedicated landscape photography camera but it could be and it would be an excellent camera 
And it, what, what it would do over all the other cameras is, it would put more reliance on you to make sure what you're doing and what you're capturing is, it, it, it relies more on your skill. Whereas what we can all do with a, a modern day digital camera with a screen, is we can stand there and we can play with the histogram, play with exposure, compensation, and all these things, until you've got an absolutely perfectly balanced image. And some would argue, why wouldn't you want to do that? But the thing with the, the Leica MD is, you have to have a bit of a vision in your mind as to what you're trying to achieve there. And, and I've really enjoyed that. Whether it's a phase I'm going through and I'll change my mind, I'm not sure, but I'm really very, very impressed with the Leica MD. There's not, I don't think there's been one shot what I've had to bin because it's blown the highlights or there's a, there's a problem with the exposure. It's been pretty accurate. I think once you learn how to use it, it's, it's a pretty good system. Other things I have noticed with it, um, there's quite a lot of more, or well, I think that's how you say it, more, yeah. You know, patterns in the, the shadows where one viewer commented on, um, you could see that on my shirt on a previous video, which is probably part of the, the Sony A7R2 problem because it doesn't have a low pass filter to make images sharper. Um, I did actually, as a side point, I did buy a Sony RX1R Mark II, which has a filter in what you can use to get rid of that. Um, but it's, you know, shooting landscapes, it's not really a problem. What I have noticed with the Leica MD though is you do get a bit of that effect, the Moiré, Moiré effect on on fabrics, on jumpers maybe, and also in shadows when there's like textures of sand on a beach perhaps. It's not a big deal because there's a tool in Lightroom to get rid of it. I've never experienced it before on any camera I've ever owned. Uh, it's not a problem. I've, I've never had to use that tool to, to get rid of that effect until I've used the Leica MD. So that's a new phenomenon to me. But on the flip side, there's very little chromatic aberration on the, the Leica lenses. There's very little distortion in where as I can see it, and they are very, very sharp images. So more than usable for what I want to do, which is to take it with me all the time and capture life's moments, special memories, you know, and now I'm confident, 100% confident, I could use that as a landscape camera, no questions asked, and I'm going to. I'm going to do that going forward. And the other thing, what I want to mention as well, is I haven't put one filter in front of a lens on the Leica MD, and that is probably a first for me. Um, when I use the Canon system, I, I had all the Lee ring, filter rings on the end of each lens I owned, and I was constantly swapping filters and this, that, and the other. Um, when I got the Sony A7R2, less as much of a use of a filter on that camera because it had such a wide dynamic range and the sensor is so forgiving in terms of what you can recover from a highlight or what you can boost from from a, a shadow and i still stand by that that sensor is probably one of the best sensors you can buy on the market at the minute um i've not tested them all obviously but in my experience it's fantastic the Leica md seems to have a very good wide dynamic range as well you know and it seems to be very forgiving in pulling highlights back in or boosting shadows up. If you keep to the low ISO, so that camera goes from ISO 200 to ISO 6400. If you put it on 6400 and even 3200, you're getting quite a bit of noise and a bit of banding I've noticed as well, which is ugly, let's be honest. But what I have noticed is if you convert the images you, you shoot at that, ISO to black and white and you stick a lot of grain on in Lightroom, a uh, grain simulation, you can't tell and they just look like really raw black and white pictures. So so that's a, a way of getting around that. But what, what I found is from 200 up to 1600, the files are beautiful and it's a really usable camera. Um, what else have I got? Yeah, one, one other point, and I might do a separate video on this as well. A lot of people have been asking me how the Leica MD compares to the Leica Q. I love the Leica Q. I think it's one of the best cameras ever made in a design perspective. It's beautiful. Since I've bought the Leica MD, I've not used the Leica Q. I took it to Sky and I put it on the fireplace and it and I never I never picked it up. And 
that is a real shame because that is a brilliant camera but when you hold the Q as opposed to the MD it's a lot lighter and all the rest of it it doesn't feel as solid and it doesn't feel as as kind of I don't want to say well made because they're both very well made but the Leica MD in my opinion is you know it's fantastic it's like a handmade bespoke item like the Hasselblad X1D felt as well um, so the Leica Q I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that now because I absolutely love that camera but you know it's a lot of money tied up in a camera what didn't get used and I'm feeling that because I think the Leica MD has just surpassed my expectations as to how good it is and I think as well with the really compact summer on lens it's been it's been a revelation the, the, the only downside I would say or the, the benefit of the Leica Q over the MD is you can it's obviously got a macro mode on the lens but you can also focus a lot closer so one of the things I have noticed with the Leica MD and the lenses I've got, which obviously the summer on and the summer it, I'm limited to about 80 centimetre focal distance. So if you sat opposite someone and you want to take up their picture, you know, I have found myself stepping back a few times, whereas on the Q obviously you wouldn't have to do that. So there's a quick overview of my thoughts on the Leica MD. Um, I had a comment the other day from a guy who was, uh, well, a bit of a conversation and he was suggesting that you know the Leica cameras are good for street photography but not maybe not so much for landscape photography which is a valid point in my experience um, I would tend to agree with him but now now that I've used this camera I would disagree because what I found was when, when I'm looking through the rangefinder you've obviously got your, your frame lines to indicate what lens you're using um, but it's nice to be able to see and highlight different focal lengths. So you can say, well, actually, if I, if I swap lenses or if I, if I move around, this is, I might get this composition instead. One really strong example I had of that was when I was at Brothers Point on the Isle of Skye, I was using the 90mm lens just to take some details within the rocks on the beach and things. And as I was taking a picture of some cliffs off in the distance, I noticed this thing floating in the water. And I, I didn't really... I didn't register it at first and then it disappeared and I thought hang on a minute and it was a seal popping its head up through the wall which is the first time I've ever seen one in the wild and uh, luckily I had the 90mm lens on so I started shooting away at it and what I noticed was as it went under the water I could maintain looking through the viewfinder and I had a really wide view but only the centre of that in the 90 millimeter portion would be captured by that lens so when it resurfaced somewhere else within the 28 millimeter wide frame I just quickly moved and shot it I wouldn't be able to do that with any other camera system you know because when you look through the viewfinder you would see 90 millimeters so you'd be seeing a very tiny square of the sea and if it popped up an inch over here you wouldn't see it so I was really impressed with that from the Leica and I thought you know I got maybe I got some images there what I wouldn't have got otherwise had I have because it was coming up and bobbing up and down you know and looking at me and various things and I'll go into these images in more detail on the the relevant day of shooting in the coming videos so you know don't fall into the trap of thinking oh a range ride is just for street photography because in my view it isn't and it can be quite a useful tool um, so yeah I think that's pretty much gone gone through my list of all the things I wanted to mention um, very pleased very happy with with what I've achieved on Sky. Um, I, I, I think I said on the pre-Sky video, which was the hour-long rambling showing you all my 10 years of images from Sky. So if you saw that through, thanks for your commitment in sticking with it. But in the preamble at the beginning, I set off with a target of getting up to the Old Man of Store. Um, unfortunately, I failed in doing that. And uh, I failed in doing that simply because I didn't have the energy to, to actually walk up there which is a real shame. But on the positive side, it just means I've got to go there again, and I will do. <laughs> so that, that's something to look forward to. So I was a, a little bit disappointed with that, but at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. I can't do anything about it, and I can't let it beat me. So I, I didn't get up to start, but I got to a few other places, which I'll, uh, I'll go into more on the coming videos. So I'll end this video with uh, a few of my favorite snapshots from Sky and I'll elaborate further on these pictures in the four, uh, 
the forthcoming videos over the next few days and um, I've got a lot more shoots planned in the Lady District coming up as well so if you want to stay tuned for that. So thanks again for all your support, all your comments and this community of people what uh, have invested in time in watching my content and giving me some feedback, commenting and following my channel. I very much appreciate that and uh, I'm actually quite humbled with all the positivity what, what people are giving me so thank you very much and uh, I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. All the best for now. Take care. Bye-bye.